Well, I just weighed anchor here at Madano Beach in Cabo San Lucas. I'm gonna make my way to Cabo Los Frailes. I believe that translates to the friars, like uh, Robin Hood fame, Friar Tuck, maybe? I don't know. Boats out here, I'll have to navigate around. And once I clear that bit of land there, I'll be on my way. Well, we're looking at Punta Cabeza de Baina. And I don't know what Baina translates to. So if you know it, please put it in the comments so I can expand my Spanish vocabulary. But it's the head of a baina here. Cabeza de Baina Lighthouse. This is what you see opposite to the uh, Land's End Rocks. When you're at Madano Beach, if you're standing on the beach, this will be on your left-hand side. Whereas the Land's End Rocks, those will be on the right-hand side standing on the beach. Sunset at Land's End. Cabo San Lucas. Wow. Pretty amazing. Yeah, there's no wind out here to speak of, but it's going to get windy. We're going to have some northerlies that are coming down Gulf of California. And I expect I'll get some of that trying to muscle my way up to Cabo Frailes, probably, I'm guessing, I could see anywhere from 12 to 16 knots. That's going to take quite a bit from this little 16 horsepower engine to muscle this boat all the way up there. So that's why I'm doing most of it at night. We'll see. I think, you know, being that I'm single-handing, the night transits are dangerous because you have to ward off the sleep monster. And I think that's particularly true in this night transit because Cabo San Lucas to Cabo Los Frailes, you're gonna pass San Jose del Cabo. There's gonna be other traffic out here. This will probably be the most traffic that I will have experienced on a night passage to date, you know, since leaving San Diego. So I'm kind of mentally preparing myself for that. You know, whatever liberties I might have taken coming down Baja, you can't do that, you know, when, when there's more traffic. So, and that's the case on this one for sure. Oh yeah. Sunset at Land's End. Pretty amazing. Look at all those boats right off the of Land's End there. Wow, that was pretty cool. And look at that is a big moon. Woo! And the colors are pretty awesome too, that cool purple. Mm. And we'll slide over here. Punta Cabeza. De Baina Lighthouse. Punta Cabeza de Baina. Yeah, I still don't know what Baina is. So seriously, like if you know what it is, you gotta tell me, because I looked it up on Google and nothing. But this is the head of the Baina. <laughs>
anchored here at Cabo Los Frailes. Uh, this is like the jump off point for pushing north to La Paz or pushing east to Mazatlan. Yeah, listen to those gusts. Oh, you could just... Well, the microphone just can't pick up the voice over these uh, gusts of wind. It's incredibly strong. Well, it was 15, but you'll see when it these gusts come down and they just come ripping down that. We'll wait till another gust comes and then I'll track it. Oh, here it comes, I think. Let's see. And it comes on fast. Yeah, that's, no, that's nothing. I mean, I've seen really high. I don't know if I saw any in the 30s yet. But, you know, it's worth knowing if you're coming here for protection from the weather. But you'll have to watch the wind and you'll have to be really careful with your ground tackle. I'm only a little over five to one. I'm not comfortable with it. Yeah. And I've got two sailboats behind me, downwind of me. This guy over here and this guy, actually three, right? This power boat over here and then this other sailboater. So. so I'm watching GPS pretty close and I'm watching this anemometer pretty close too. Here's this, this, this hill. I would have been better over here. Just look at the water. Yeah, there's no excuse for that. That was just really bad choice of anchorage. Now, in my defense, I anchored at five o'clock in the morning after doing a night passage. I knew I had to get close to this rock, but it's unnerving. You can hear the surf hitting the rocks as you come in and you can't see anything. I was actually pretty fortunate. I had a full moon, but even that moonlight, you know, okay, now you see the shadow of the big rock. That's probably more ominous. <laughs> Well, as best I can tell, these winds are going to keep up through the night. Doing this single-handed, I like to pull in in these anchorages to try to recover some rest and try to get some sleep in. Honestly, if I leave the boat, that's great. But if there's nothing there, then may not leave, you know. It's really about rest for me. So in this case, the way the winds are, I'm going to have to hold a pretty taut anchor watch. It's not going to be a lot of sleeping, I think. Hopefully these winds don't keep going all this time, but they might, you know. I think I'm going to be awake again. It's like, man, maybe I should go and, and just motor to La Paz. But to be honest, Frog's Leap is a wide boat and she's not very long, so she doesn't really go into seas well. <laughs> Another sunrise at Bahia Frailes. So in other news, I it's been really windy right here and I haven't moved because once you get your anchor set, if it's holding, stick with it, right? Because the longer your anchor is in the sand or in the mud or wherever it is, the more it digs itself in. And even if you don't like your anchorage, you know, the devil you know is holding, so that's where I'm going with, the devil I know, you know. But I wanted to tell you that I've come to realize there's a weakness in this anchor bridle I made. So you can see I took it off of the boat and I replaced it with a couple of mooring lines on a soft shackle. And I'll show you why if we go up to the front of the boat here. So what was happening, now you can see I've got just uh, two mooring lines. I got a mooring line here, mooring line here, both with chafing gear. 
and both of them are made off by soft shackle to the chain directly and what was happening on the other bridle in the lines were getting wrapped around the chain so yeah no bueno so now we're with mooring lines yes yeah, so that was the project for this morning the bridle was getting wrapped around the chain as the boat would turn you don't want it wrapped up around your chain you need to be able to deploy more chain if you get a rat's nest with chain and bridle man you're just asking for trouble so i pulled that bridle i gotta rethink it it is what it is man you know? constantly trying to improve the situation you know <laughs> <laughs> 